yeah, I'll, look, Foz has obviously addressed it, and um, you know, it's uh, it is what it is, and um, yeah, it's feel for him. We love him, um, but you know, we looking forward to a game this Friday. Oh, this Saturday, sorry. So um, yeah, that's all I can say about it. Hi, uh, Luke from The Guardian. Hi, Adi. Um, can we get a few thoughts on the Ireland uh, back row? Uh, what, how you found playing against them in the past and, and looking ahead to the weekend? Yeah, mate, they're, they're world class. Um, Doris and Van der Fleur. Um, only they, you know, they've been playing together for many, many years and I feel like you know, they, just, they just look like they're clicking and in sync. Um, so um, it's, a, it's kind of like a, a great challenge for us to go out go out and battle against a loose trio like that. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to it, to the battle, but also know it's going to be a massive challenge. Uh, just a question for Adi. No, over here. After the um, the high stakes, the last high stakes game in 2019 in Japan, uh, Steve Hansen went to great lengths to say that that loss and the hurt of it would benefit you guys down the track four years later. And now here we are in another playoff game. Can you give us an insight in how much you've tapped into that defeat against England and, and how you've used it ahead of this game? Um, yeah, I, I guess um, different individuals tap into that, um, into what happened in the last World Cup. And we have some boys that weren't even in there. So I think um, it's up to the individual and, and whether they tap into that. But we've talked about it's a final for us and there's no second chance. So... Um, we want to go out there on Saturday and leave with no regret and no stone unturned. So whatever that looks like for us, we just need to go out there and jam and play some footy. Uh, hi, a question for both. Um, the, the All Blacks have never been uh, underdogs in a knockout game in, in a Rugby World Cup. So, so does it feel kind of weird? Um, as a player, it's not a biggie for us. Uh, none of the boys are on the TAB or Bet365 punting, so um, <laughs> it's not a biggie. That would be a breach of protocol as well, I guess. That is, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's not a biggie for us. So it's You can't um, show away from the fact how great this island team is, uh, what they've done the last couple of years. Um, defensively, a really sound team and um, able to put teams in some pressure moments because of their set piece and the way they play the game. Um, and they're the best team in the world right now. Uh, we don't have to be the best team in the world now, we're gonna be the best on the day and that's Saturday. So that's um, a real target for us and something we're looking forward to. Thank you. Richie, um, in these games, a lot's made of who's under the most pressure, who's the most motivated. For you guys, how much are you motivated by the fact that there's a number of players leaving this team, including yourself, for a while? Uh, how much motivation is there, is there in that, that you're trying to send some guys off in, in, in style? That, that's a big part of um, our motivation. Another big part is what happened four years ago in the semi-final. Um, and Does that still sit in the back of your yeah, mind? Yeah, it does. It's huge motivation for myself around, um, you know, a quarter-final win and, and, and riding a high and then um, probably not resetting back to zero for that semi. So that's a really big learning for us as a team. And also just how brutal World Cups can be, and it comes down to some real small things and, and moments in a game. Um, the other other motivation is just a statement we want to make about the 2023 20, All Blacks team, and that's um, probably the biggest motivator is knowing what we're capable of and knowing the opportunity that lies ahead and wanting to just stamp our mark and, and really the potential that this team has and, and what better way to 
you know, to do it on Saturday, and then that's a, probably the biggest motivation for this team. Richie, you've had a few matchups now against um, Johnny Sexton. Um, what's he like to come up against a playmaker, and, and what do you take out of the way that he runs a, a game? Yeah, Johnny's uh, he's all class. He's he's world class, and um, he's a true uh, director of his team. Everything goes through Johnny, and um, the way he's able to play and. and be so consistent at the top level. He's uh, really transcended, um, you know, what it's like to play as a first five uh, fly half. And, um, yeah, it's just a yeah, true honour and privilege to, to match up against someone like him. It's really cool. And uh, it's someone from, you know, the other side of the world. It's really um, exciting. Uh, Richie, um, Ireland at one point I think defended for two and a half minutes against Scotland. Um, how much of a challenge is it to um, unlock that such a, a strong defence? Yeah, it's, it's a huge task. Um, it starts up front, um, ball carry and, and momentum and um, winning the speed of the ruck, making that ball as quick as we can. But um, they defend so well because... Uh, a number of things are two tacklers in, in the in the tackle that slows the ball down and uh, fording in the front line sometimes. So I think the variation in our attack has to be um, we got to play eyes up footy but do the basics really well to to challenge these guys. And if we can do that, we can get inroads and and hopefully get awarded some penalties around the ruck. And um, yeah, they're a really sound team and what they do. Is, um, is part of their DNA. They defend well, and as you know from last World Cups, defence wins World Cups and championships and really close games, so it'll be important for our defence to do that as well. Richie, just how crucial has it been having Joe Schmidt in your camp with all the knowledge that he has of Ireland? Yeah, it's been really great to have him in. Um, he really um, is just a true, passionate um, man of the game of rugby. And, um, you know, you get caught in the hallways talking code with them. You know, you could be there a, a fair a while. Um, so you got to just, like, turn the head the other way sometimes and uh, <laughs> try and avoid that. Um, now nah, he's, he's awesome. A uh, different perspective of, of footy he has. And... Um, I would say the perspective is a, a real basic and um, things that make a team tick really well. And, you know, there's been a few times too you've seen, a, you know, an angry Joe Schmidt as well, which has been pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, just a lover of the game and really wants to see the best in his footy players and see them unlock their potential, which is... I find is a, the coolest thing about him. And, and a question for you, uh, Richie. Uh, since the last uh, five years, you play as 10 and body play as uh, 15. How can you describe the link between, uh, between you and the uh, body? And uh, more recently, you play with Jordi too. In this, uh, so it's Richie with the uh, two bro <laughs> Barrett brothers. How can you describe this link with uh, with them? Um, yeah, it's 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 been amazing having that um, the connection and, and that um, familiarity amongst the players and the backs with Jordi and Bodhi and um, really helps me because they they think like a, a fly half. And I think that's really crucial to the comms that I need and sometimes the way the game needs to be uh, driven. Uh, but it's cool, you know, with the Barrett brothers, you know, sometimes you wish you were Barrett yourself, you know, <laughs> the family's just that talented, eh? Or a Saver. <laughs> um, but no, nah, it's cool. Hey, guys, uh, Richie, just here. Just 
Can I ask you, you mentioned earlier that Ireland are the best team in the world, and Aaron Smith said the other day, given the shirt you're wearing, the crest that's on your, your, your breast there, the, what you guys represent, how annoying is it to have to say that about another team? Um, yeah, it's... it's um, yeah, the numbers don't lie. They're the best team in the world. It's obviously not what I want to be saying in front of you all today, uh, but those are the facts. But the beauty is um, we had the opportunity on Saturday to play them, and um, that's just the real exciting thing about this week, about there's there's no more lives, there's no more chances, and that um, the playing fields are even when we get out on the pitch, and... and, and who's prepared the best and put in the most work and, and who's um, had those conversations about small details around strategy and, and whatnot at the line-out of scrum. It's, it'll all show on, on Saturday, so it's uh, really exciting. Um, one for Ardy. Uh, Richie mentioned how quite annoying playing against Johnny Sexton. What was it like playing against Peter Omani? And he, he likes to talk a little bit. Yeah, oh, he's a he's a warrior. Um, you know, he's been around for for such a long time, but he's probably still one of the best Lucys that's going around. Um, so I don't know how he does it, uh, throwing his body around like that every game. But um, yeah, if, like for for players, it's like you watch them um, as a kid, and then you kind of play a few games, and then you get kind of a bit older, and then you like relish the challenge. So. Um, it's a testament to Peter and, and what he's done in the game and, and the Irish jersey. And uh, for me, it's a great like opportunity to go up against him and the other loose trio um, with our brothers too to to go up against them and, and really change, challenge ourselves against the best in the world. So now he's mate, he's a legend in the game, legend of Irish rugby, and he played his hundredth game last last week. So a massive congratulations to him. Um, but yeah. Come Saturday, hopefully, you know, it'll be a good spectacle and a good battle. Hi, guys. Ashling here from Off the Ball in Ireland. A question for you both, if that's okay. How would you describe Ireland as a team? And at the moment, who or what has really impressed you maybe over the last year or two? Oh, it's hard to go. Um, probably say also uh, Josh van der Fleer. Um, yeah, good, good mate of mine off the field. Good Christian man. Um, and yeah, he's been impressive. Uh, he's always 100%, always going hard. Um, just looks like he keeps going and could go for another 80. Um, so yeah, he's been, yeah, he's been real class. They're um, all class, but I think uh, Mac Hansen is, is pretty, uh, especially when he had his long hair, it was coming out of his headgear. Uh, but he's just um, pretty old school. He ch chases the ball hard, makes his tackles, and um, nothing really, uh, you know, magical. But um, yeah, he seems to get through some work, and sometimes it goes unnoticed. But yeah, he's really impressed me. Like his side as well? Yeah, yeah. That could be his Aussie side, maybe. <laughs> 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 no, nah, he's he's awesome. Um, Adi, I asked a similar question to Sam before, and I know um, Richie touched on sort of the opportunity, I suppose, this weekend as well. You'll be aware of the noise around this game that you guys are underdogs, as we mentioned here. I just wonder if you could talk to the opportunity and how, what it would do for your own confidence and what message it would send if you could win this game. Oh, man. You know, we're very excited. We can't wait. Um, we kind of reflect on the start of the year and, um, you know, World Cup year and talked about wanting to be in a quarterfinal and, and we're here now so um, for us it's a, it's a huge blessing and um, this team's been through a lot together and it's a really you know like Rich said um, go out there and perform the way we want to perform and get the result we want to get um, will be hugely um, important for us and and hopefully yeah and take us the whole way but yeah we we got to nail it but we're very excited for this week. Can't wait. Thanks, team. That's us.